How to stencil. This video shows you how to stencil on a boat's life ring, but the technique and equipment are pretty much similar to other stenciling projects. So even if you're not a boater, stay tuned for this episode of this old fiberglass boat. Hi, I'm Alan Stokel, and on this episode, we'll look at stenciling techniques. I have this old life ring that uh, hangs off the back of my boat. I haven't used it yet, but it was getting pretty worn, and uh, the line running through it seemed to have some black mold on it, and the reflective tape was starting to come off, so I thought I'd update it. If you want to stencil, there is a checklist for everything you will need to complete your project. Some stencils, obviously. I'm using both the old-fashioned paper and the new plastic ones. There is a YouTube video showing you how to make your own, if you wish. I have some tacking spray. It may also be known as movable or temporary adhesive. Lots of masking tape. Thick acrylic paint. I did an earlier project with oil paint and it took forever to dry and it started bleeding under the stencil. I also have something to draw a straight line, or in my particular case, an ellipse, chalk, or a pencil. A stencil brush, if you're stenciling on smooth surface such as plastic, some 120 grit sandpaper, and some clear spray lacquer to form a protective coating. First, I took everything off, the life ring. The tape, the stickers, uh, and I needed a hot air blow dryer to, uh, to take off a lot of the stickers and a plastic scraper. And then I cleaned it well with acetone to get off the excess paint and adhesive. When using chemicals like that, always use them in a well-ventilated space and wear protective gloves. So now the surface is pretty much cleaned off. If you are um, stenciling onto resin or plastic like I am, you have one other step to prep the surface. Any surface that is very smooth will require a light sanding to give the surface a bit of a tooth. I'm using 120 grit paper here and make sure that you wipe the surface to get rid of the loose grit caused by the sanding after you've finished. Now place the stencils where you want them to be. I use tacking spray to hold them in position temporarily. If you are stenciling onto a three-dimensional object like this, you may also want to keep some of the stencil flat on the surface. I'm using uh, masking tape between the stencils to prevent overpainting. Now some people use spray paint, but I don't recommend it. You do get a very distinctive look, and spray paint is almost always oil-based. Now, here is the hard part. Getting just the right amount of paint on the brush. The paint should be thick and opaque, and you should dab rather than brush the paint on the uh, surface to prevent bleeding. Try not to apply too much paint at any one time. Acrylic paint dries really quickly, so consider two light coats rather than one heavy one. Remove the stencil before the paint is completely dry, and when that is will really depend on the room temperature, the humidity, and the paint you're using. If you uh, make a smear, you can probably scrape it off at that point. There, I'm done. Now, because this is on plastic, I'm putting on a coat of lacquer to protect the surface. Thank you for watching this episode of This Old Fiberglass Boat. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. If you have any questions, type them below or email me at 
grampianmarine at gmail.com. My name is Alan Stokel, and I'll see you next time.